Ballet is one of three major ballet companies in Australia, um, only three full-time professional ballet companies. The others being the Australian Ballet based in Melbourne and West Australian Ballet based in Perth. Um, we have now grown from a small to medium-sized ballet company um, when compared with larger overseas ballet companies, such as the Royal Ballet in London, which has 95 dancers, Paris Opera Ballet, which has 150 dancers, and the Bolshoi Ballet in Russia, which has 230 dancers. So we have 58 full-time professional dancers, um, even numbers uh, men and women and an age range of 18 to 37 years. So it's quite uh, a longish career, I guess, compared to some sports, and um, various uh, physical, physical issues in that age range, um, right from those coming through uh, adolescence and coming out the other side, right up to those who are becoming slightly aged by the end. <laughs> Um, Queensland Ballet is a very multicultural company, so we currently have about 30% of our dancers um, originating from overseas, uh, from quite a mix of countries including China, Cuba, Switzerland, Argentina, Japan, um, as well as all over Australia. Uh, and, oh sorry, I should say the USA, Scotland and Spain. Um, now, I don't want to make any assumptions, uh, which I shouldn't make, but for those of you who may not be so familiar with the world of professional ballet, I just wanted to show a little excerpt of what we do on stage, just to give you a view of um, uh, our end product, I guess, and the athleticism of our dancers. Um, and we've seen a lot of quite impressive marketing uh, footage today and some epic music, so this should fit right in. So let's go. So just to give you an idea of a ballet company structure, ballet companies are very hierarchical. Uh, so at the top of the uh, organisation we have the artistic director, who is the, um, the big boss, who is then flanked by an artistic team or a coaching team um, in, in a sporting terminology, uh, which is made up of ballet masters and ballet mistresses who coach the whole company and teach the choreography and the repertoire. Um, the dancers are divided into rankings, as you can see here. So this is the current makeup of Queensland Ballet dancers. So you can see that it's quite bottom heavy in structure. So younger dancers come in at the bottom of the organisation and the goal is to work their way up through the rankings to eventually become a principal artist. Um, it's an extremely highly competitive environment. Uh, you can imagine across Australia and the world, there are not many jobs. So even to become a professional ballet dancer is, is a massive achievement and very few actually make it to the very top of the tree to become a principal artist through the course of their career. Um, promotions are awarded by the artistic director based on talent, work ethic, uh, ballet technique, um, as well as uh, experience in different stage roles and also aesthetic factors such as height, physique and the dancer's look. 
So here you can see some of our um, company artists, female company artists, who are the base level of the company in uh, the larger group work in a classical ballet. And the goal for them, for every one of them, would be wanting to work their way up to eventually do featured or lead roles in ballets as a soloist or principal artist. Um, dancers at Queensland Ballet are on 12-month employment contracts, and this is renewed uh, every year. Um, in most years, dancers continue on, but this is at the artistic director's discretion and so is not guaranteed. Um, the employment um, situation varies between different ballet companies. So, for example, some companies in Europe, uh, dancers have uh, contracts for life. Um, so there are pros and cons to that both ways in terms of their mentality and their performance levels um, with those situations. We have a health team at Queensland Ballet covering a number of disciplines, as shown here. Um, so our physios have hours uh, that total to about 1.6 full-time physios for almost 60 dancers. So compared to professional sport, that's a pretty low ratio, I would imagine, compared to many top teams. Um, we also have massage, uh, Pilates, strength training, um, sessions which are tailored to the dancers' requirements. Um, we have an external team of consultants, which we refer to uh, doctors and specialists who have experience treating dancers or some knowledge of their workload requirements. Um, you will see that in this list there are no sports scientists or data scientists, so you can stop hyperventilating, it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a goal for the future, um, but bear in mind that we are essentially an art. So we are an art form that has a lot of crossover with sport and with athletes, but we are an art form. So that is an evolution which uh, continues. <laughs> uh, so in-house treatment is supplied for our dancers and external medical treatment is actually covered by workplace or work cover insurance. Um, many ballet and dance companies worldwide do not have any healthcare or any treatment services for their dancers. So it's not a given that every company has what we have. Um, in fact, I'm happy to say that Australian and English um, dance companies generally are leading the way in the provision of healthcare services for their dancers. Um, and I should add in New Zealand as well. <laughs> So to get on to um, an overview of our dancers' workloads, our year is divided up into rehearsal periods and performance periods. So each rehearsal period is usually about five to six weeks, and the dancers learn multiple roles in each ballet. So they're not just learning one thing. There are, almost, there are also multiple casts that rotate between shows, so they're learning multiple roles in multiple casts. Um, their daily timetable is they train and rehearse from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. every day. Uh, with a one-hour lunch break. Um, so that's pretty intense and pretty long hours. Um, Saturdays is a shorter day during the rehearsal period and Sunday is their day off. Um, so to give you a, a visual on uh, a daily um, schedule, we have five ballet studios. Uh, the blue, I know you won't be able to read all the writing, but the blue blocks are the company rehearsal periods or training periods. So everybody starts with a one and a half hour class at the beginning of the day, which is essentially their skills training, where they perfect um, the steps and the execution of the steps um, in order to then move into rehearsals, which go all day apart from that lunch break. So all different sections of different ballets, different casts being rehearsed across five different studios by different coaches or, or dance masters. Um, so in ballet, every detail has to be perfect. The steps, obviously, the timing with the music, the speed, the execution, uh, the arm positions, leg positions, head positions, facial expressions, portrayal of the character, all of that has to be perfect and has to be coached and coached and coached and rehearsed. So there's an enormous amount of repetition and time that is put into making that performance look perfect on stage. Um, and part of the dancer's job is to make it look easy on stage. So if they're showing a lot of effort, they shouldn't be. <laughs> um, and hopefully they are so well rehearsed and feeling so good that they can reach that moment of, of uh, perfection or flow on stage where they're so immersed in what they're doing that they are almost becoming that character, um, which is something that dancers say they only probably experience a few times in their career, that true moment of, of where everything gels as perfectly as they want. 
So looking at performance seasons, we have seven approximately every year, and each one runs for two to three weeks with between 12 and 20 performances in a performance block. So the dancers have a slightly shorter training day. They still start at 10. They finish rehearsing and training at 3, and then they have a three-hour gap before they come back for the evening show. So starting at about 6, and then the show is usually finished by 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. And then they back up and do it again the next day and the next day and the next day for two or three weeks. There are also double show days, usually on two days a week. So then they have an afternoon performance, a 1.30 performance, and then an evening performance as well. So that's why we have several casts that, that rotate through. But very rarely do um, any of the more lower rankings in the company ever get a show off. It would only be the principal artists who may get a show off here and there. And we also tour. So we go on tour uh, regionally, annually, interstate and internationally every one to two years. Um, and we're now getting to the point with 58 dancers that we can also do split company performance seasons and split company touring. So for example, um, the week after next, we will have performances of a contemporary dance season happening here in Brisbane. And we will also have half the company touring to Canberra performing Cinderella, which is a very classical ballet. So we're now at the point where we are able to do that, but obviously we have to have the support teams and the health teams to back that up and look after our dancers. So one of, our, um, one of our challenges in ballet, which is different to most sports, is that every single performance season is different. So each ballet has its own style, its own choreography. Um, and so the ballet steps in the class or the training remain consistent, but the rest of the rehearsal day or the rest of the ballet uh, is different according to whatever production you're doing. And of course, the productions change every year as well. Um, so that makes it uh, challenging physically for the dancers to adjust to those changes in styles and workloads. So a traditional classical ballet such as Swan Lake has set choreography which we can anticipate and we can work towards to build strength and be prepared for that heavy workload. However, if it's a new ballet or a contemporary dance work, uh, we may not know what the style of the choreography will be, and sometimes it's quite experimental in the studio. So it means that the risk of injury in that rehearsal period of a new ballet uh, is a lot higher, and it's very hard to anticipate um, from an injury prevention or injury minimisation point of view. Um, and then also within a specific ballet, there are different roles, and different roles have different, obviously, steps and different injury risks depending on their difficulty. So most modern ballet companies these days transition quite regularly between classical ballets, like the picture you last saw, and then more contemporary or modern dance. So classical ballets are typically your tutus, tiaras, point shoes, lots of big jumps uh, type of ballet. Contemporary dance or modern dance is generally not in point shoes, requires a lot more complex and difficult lifting for the men in unusual positions and often a lot more acrobatic type manoeuvres. So uh, I guess our injury risk is, is constantly changing depending on, on the choreography. So let's get on to Smarter Bass. Uh, the very first ballet company to use, start using Smarter Bass was the Royal Ballet, which is based in London. And they've been developing and working closely with Smarter Bass to customise it to their needs uh, from a, a more sport perspective for the last five to six years. Um, we are, in comparison, very much in our infancy. So we've just been using Smarter Bass for the last 18 months. So we are just scratching the surface, I think, as Sandra said earlier, um, we feel the same. Uh, we've had enormous um, improvements with our appointment scheduling, our coordination between all of our members of our health team, um, communication, and data security and injury data collection, which is now starting to allow us to look at injury risk minim minimisation as well. So looking at our... Um, uh, coordinating our dancer health records and detecting patterns of injury has already been a huge benefit to us using SmarterBase, as well as efficiency with management for myself as the coordinator of the health team um, and also the health team uh, as far as service provision and communication between all of us. Um, 
We use it in our injury surveillance, so we can look at trends across month by month across the year. Uh, I know this is not new for many of you, but this is very exciting for us because before it was all manual uh, Excel spreadsheets and me calculating it myself manually. Uh, so this has been a real game changer for us and makes it very, very easy for us to start to communicate in more depth with the artistic or the coaching staff about the trends that we're seeing rather than it being a gut feeling or an instinct based on their previous experience or what they're seeing in the dance studio. Um, so that's really made um, a huge improvement and we can start to advocate on behalf of the dancers, especially with respect to fatigue, long working hours, injury prevention and that sort of thing. Um, so this is just a graph of the injury treatment uh, patterns across the whole of uh, most of 2018 last year. So it demonstrates the variations week by week um, according to how the dancers are seeking treatment for various things. And the different colours basically represent their um, uh, status with respect to workload. So are they on full, uh, full workload, which is uh, green, restricted or modified duties, uh, or, or the purple indicates that they are off with a more serious injury. So it also allows us to track how the dancers are using the health services, whether they're using it mainly for maintenance or prevention, which is obviously encouraged, um, or whether when, uh, when things get a bit more tricky, whether it's mostly the ones who are already in a restricted status uh, with more serious injuries or being off who are seeking, seeking our help. So looking at um, future directions, our goals for the next stage are to start to use SmarterBase for more detailed, detailed profiling of our individual dancers um, and monitoring of, uh, regular monitoring of parameters such as jump height, strength um, changes and wellness measures across the whole dancer cohort. Um, our next big challenge, which we haven't managed to do just yet, is to roll out the scheduling module from within SmarterBase. We haven't been able to do that yet because of logistical challenges, international tours, renovation of our home base building, so we haven't quite rolled that out, but that's something we're incredibly keen to do. Um, so that all of that scheduling that you saw on that previous slide comes into SmarterBase and therefore that allows us as the health team to start to really monitor their workload um, in a much more accurate way accurate way. Um, initially, we're interested in being able to accurately measure the time spent in training rehearsals and performances and what variations can occur according to different ballets and different castings of different dancers with their roles and how much that changes. Um, that hopefully should be fairly straightforward using um, SmarterBase and with the scheduling module once we get it going. But then the next question is, and we might throw that open to the group uh, at the end, is how do we measure intensity uh, in the dance world with uh, the rehearsals and the structure that they have in their day? Um, I personally think a, a rate of perceived exertion is probably not going to be reported accurately uh, across the dancer group, because if you're asking them to uh, rate their RPE perhaps six times a day for every class or separate rehearsal that they have, I can't see the compliance uh, really taking off and I don't think that the results are going to be overly accurate um, if we try and instigate that, but that's my view. Um, so we're, we're keen to look at questions in the future about what kind of measures would accurately indicate intensity in this group of uh, performers and how we can measure that without interfering with their rehearsal process or the physicality of what they do. Um, because with partnering and that sort of thing, we can't have a lot of physical add-ons and things that get in the way of what they're doing in the ballet studio. So we're very, also very excited about the research potential um, now that we're in the SmarterBase group. Um, we, there's actually a ballet company user group which is uh, starting up, which we're very keen to be part of and contribute to. And we're hoping that with that will come a lot of information sharing, use of SmarterBase amongst the ballet users uh, of SmarterBase, uh, of which there are now potentially four or five different companies or schools of dance that are looking at using SmarterBase or are, are already using it. Um, and we're hoping that it could lead to some really amazing uh, injury prevention and data sharing on injury data worldwide through different dance companies um, of different kinds. So to conclude, um, it's been a pleasure to be part of the summit today and I'd like to thank you very much for inviting me and as the only performing arts rep in the mix, uh, thank you very much. And um, yeah, thanks for your time. <laughs>